we have an update regarding the IBX. As you can see in the Tyler's article, there it says the MTA capital plan, of course, the 2025-2029 capital plan, will advance the IBX light rail project, which will link both Brooklyn and Queens. So as you guys know, this is supposed to be a very, very important project for both Brooklyn and Queens. This is the line that used to be used by the Long Island Railroad. This used to be the Bay Ridge branch for the LA like R. Now, I don't know how important it was back in the days, but for some reason, it no longer became into service for probably a big reason, which is more than likely ridership. But what they're trying to do here is revitalize the track that used to be used for service way back then, which was for the Allied R. But in this case, they want to change things up a bit and sort of introduce a new mode of transit, and that is light rail. Uh, if you guys recall, I believe in New Jersey Transit, they have light rail. And then I believe in Philadelphia, I believe they also have light rail as well. So we're trying to replicate essentially what they're doing in both uh, New Jersey and in Philadelphia. So as you can see in this graphic, I didn't actually realize that it was really well detailed. And they show you not only how many cars uh, the IBX train is consisted of. So you have four train cars, one, two, three, four. You have a side platform. So that's definitely really interesting. It kind of reminds me of the Staten Island Railway in a way, because as you guys noticed, the Staten Island Railway is basically like its own system. It doesn't go anywhere, but to different parts in Staten Island. And when I saw the, I guess the design of the station, this made me remind of one of the stations on the SIR. But here you could clearly see that it is the new Utrecht Avenue station for the IBX. And indeed, it does connect both the DNN if it were to be in service today. A very important stop because it, it could connect you to these two subway lines, the D and the N. So you can see that on that side, it would be, well, this side of the picture, which my my left is your right. That's broken. That's the side for Brooklyn Army Terminal, and the opposite side obviously will be for Roosevelt. Really interesting. Who knows when this will be done, but it has to get done. The one thing is for sure in this channel, I follow up a lot on the IBX. As soon as there's an update, you will see me on this channel talk about it and post it. So this was posted this week on the 22nd of September, and it is very interesting. So let's get to it. So the MTAs. 68 billion capital plan unveiled last week proposes starting construction on the IBX, which is a potential transformative light rail link for both Brooklyn and Queens. So for the capital plan for 2025 and 2029, the transit agency's overarching five-year spending priorities for maintenance, renewal, and expansion, including a $2.75 billion to advance the 14-mile IBX project which will consist from Bay Ridge to Jackson Heights, Queens, which would go into its construction phase. And as you guys know, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, this would be the first ever light rail line, which would run along existing freight rail tracks, as you guys know, the New York and Atlantic. And it is also based on a long-standing plan by advocates that would extend the Bronx. But in this case, that's not going to happen. However, it is intended to address the post-pandemic commuting patterns that see more and more Brooklyn and Queens residents traveling between boroughs for work instead of into Manhattan. The IBX would connect to 17 subway lines, as you guys know, and it would connect to 50 bus routes, which that actually surprised me. So that stretch. Now, I don't know if it's 14 miles. It could be more than that. But the fact that it could connect to 50 buses should tell you that this is going to be a very important project. And when we talk about bus hubs, I could definitely tell you right now for someone that is very familiar with the Flatbush area, Flatbush Avenue, Nostrand, that definitely is a bus hub. Uh, if I were to choose another place on this where it could be a potential bus hub, probably maybe Atlantic Avenue where you have East New York, that could potentially be a bus hub. You do have a couple of bus lines running around there. Uh, I guess the next one after that probably would have to be Myrtle, maybe Myrtle. And then obviously the, the biggest one yet has to be Roosevelt. But if you were to ask me what, what are the two biggest bus hubs for the IBX, by far it's Roosevelt and also Flatbush. By far it's one of the biggest bus hubs. And probably 
those two stops alone on the IVX probably occupies, I won't be surprised, half of the bus routes that will be consistent as and available for transfer. And not just that, but it also will consist of connecting to the Long Island Railroad. And if you're wondering where it's going to connect, well, it's going to connect that Atlantic, obviously, Atlantic Avenue, which in the Long Island Railroad on the Brooklyn branch, it would be the East New York train station. Now, if you were to sort of like give an, a, an approximate, what would be another station that can serve the Long Island Road? I would say Roosevelt. But the thing is, you would have to take the 7 to Woodside and then from there connect to the railroad. So it's not easy, but at least at least it'll link you close enough to a, like the Blair Station in Queens like Woodside. And if not Woodside, then if you take the 7 to Flushing, then you would also connect to the Port Washington line there at Flushing. And yes, it would also connect service to long and neglected transit digests like East Flatbush and Brooklyn. Uh, look, this is something that I've truly mentioned a lot on this channel, and that is the 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 unbelievable transit desert that exists within that section of the proposed IBX line, which you see here. Uh, for example, like Utica, even though Utica has its fair share of stuff around, uh, but when we refer to stuff like Remsen. That definitely has some uh, bus, uh, not bus, but transit deserts. Linden Boulevard, you could definitely say that's for sure. Now for Utica Avenue, right? What I meant is I would say south of Utica Avenue. So something like um, New York Avenue, Albany Avenue, Brooklyn Avenue. Those three avenues that I just mentioned right there are for sure transit deserts. Where in that case, people who live within this portion of the line, they would have to literally go all the way to Junction. Junction Flatbush to be able to access some sort of transit. And uh, here we have a quote from uh, Tor Springer, uh, who is the head of the construction and development, who said, our system is vast and we're focused on, on taking care of it. Uh, but where there is great opportunity to serve New Yorkers with improved transportation options, we'll do that. All right. So the, the billion dollar question, because for the viewers that comment on the articles, when it comes down to funding, there's always a comment and concern saying, oh, where's the money going to come from? How are they going to get it? Are they actually going to pay for the whole thing? And is this actually going to become reality? So stuff like that, that I just mentioned are typical responses in which I would get from my viewers that would comment in videos, community posts, you name it. So the $2.75 billion allocation within the capital plan represents about half of the total cost for the project. The agency says this is a substantial down payment on the project as it seeks financing from both uh, the federal government to complete its federal environmental reviews and to also finalize design and engineer work and eventually to begin putting work on the line itself. Now, I'll just go over this real quick because this is more of the economic side, which I guess you guys can't, can care less, but let's just go over it anyways. Obviously, the source of the money becomes an open question. Uh, half of the money secured it needs, or I'm sorry, MT does have half of the money that it needs to secure the full plan. However, it also includes billions for priorities that will be mentioned in, a, in another video, of course, where you have uh, this section where I just highlighted. That's actually for another video where they are literally pumping billions to do an, an, an extreme overhaul of the system, which will consist of repairing the structures, replacing the old damn trains, improving the power systems, and obviously the most important one, going to that transition from fixed block to subway, I'm sorry, it's from fixed block to CBC, CBTC technologies. And not just that, the last part is more for accessibility. Of course, the goal by 2050, which was mandated, mandated by, the, by the government, they were saying that the MTA must have 95% of accessibility by the year of 2050, which is absolutely an insane ultimatum, but at the end, it does make sense. So what's more, and again, that glitching, I don't understand what that is, but what's more, uh, the governor who has been the one who came up with this project, and like I said, it's, um, it's a credit that I have to give because there could be things that I might not agree with with the governor but if there's one thing that i must agree with her on is this project and the fact that she came up with it and the fact how something like this i know i know this is going like really off topic but she could <laughs> potentially get elected again it, not only if this goes through but if it turns out to a big success then this could potentially put her back in, in office but that 
we don't know if that's going to even happen. Of course, that's something that I go off topic sometimes. Usually don't like to discuss it on the channel. But there she says that she describes it as a baby where uh, a 16.5 billion hole in the current capital plan, the previous one, uh, within pausing the MTS congestion program would have raised money by... L okay, so, so they're talking about congestion pricing. Should new sources of money be found for the existing plan, uh, they would buy buy extensions, subtract money away from the new plan, said Rachel Foss. All right. Uh, Hokal is reportedly m mulling restarting the toll. Okay, so it does seem that she wants to go back and go for it, go for congestion pricing, but I want to know how that's going to go. Uh, but should she do that, there would still be a hole in the existing capital plan. MTA Brass will present the plan this week to the agency's board, which will vote on recommending it to the state's capital program review board. Funding decisions are up to the state and lawmakers. So the head of the MTA, uh, General Lieber, has expressed confidence in which the governor and the legislature will materialize new funding. All right. So this portion is actually the last portion of this video. And what they're bringing up in this article, specifically in this section, is the concerns of this specific section of the IBX, which if we were to go up above to the line itself, to this graphic, it's the section between uh, Metropolitan and Myrtle because you happen to have a semi or if it's actually not there, you know what? It's just just to put it better yet from Wilson to Metropolitan from Wilson Avenue to Metropolitan. This section that you see here is the the, the section of concern and the and the section of interest. That that you see here is a graphic of what Wilson Avenue will look in the future, which, like I said, it looks pretty good. But uh, the great the grave concern for this project, specifically in this section, once again, is the fact that you have a cemetery roaming around here. And the concern becomes, what are you going to do with that? Uh, is the is the line going to continue running on the ground or are they going to bring it up? run it on the street at a specific section, then bring it back down on the tracks, which is what I believe I heard in the meeting when I went to the IBX at the time. So the capital plan uh, presentation, which I believe they're talking about. No, they're actually talking about the actual capital plan presentation. It didn't answer one of the more cr crucial questions for the IBX. Whether the route will pass through a tunnel underneath the cemetery in Middle Village, Queens, or divert it onto the local streets for two thirds of a mile, which... I could definitely tell you guys right now, the likelihood of it going onto the streets is going to be a possibility because that's something that I heard when I attended the event. So I don't know if any viewer that's watching this video went to the event when they had it in Flatbush for the IBX. The, the event was basically a community outreach where they um, provided a presentation in the beginning. And then after that, it was more of like an interaction where they had a bunch of boards uh, you were entitled to post your comments, questions, concerns, even request, if anything, which is something that I actually did. I, on almost every single board, I did interact. I left co concerns and comments, and I even met uh, the team in the IBX there. And that's the video that I did a couple of months, not, not a couple of months, last year in November. So if you guys want to know more, more of that video, I'm going to leave it in the comment section in the, not in the comment section, but I'll leave it in the description of this video. But getting back to this, MC has said the existing tunnel is too narrow to add passenger tracks alongside freight ones. And expanding it would be prohibitively expensive and also disturb the graves above it, which is something you definitely do not want to do. Because looking at it in that point of view, I know something that hey, is usually no one, no one talks about it because it'll be not strange, but kind of like unusual. But doing something like that around graves, if you even dare to touch it or grave or um, carve through it or whatever, that could potentially be bad luck. And that's something that we don't want, especially for a project that is something that we've been waiting for, especially for those that live in Brooklyn and Queens. But the street running proposal has been lambasted uh, from various corners. Transit experts say it could torpedo speed and reliability along the line, while one local politician has threatened to derail the whole thing unless the MTA opts to tunnel under the graveyard, citing potential traffic and disruption to property owners. So look, we already took a dose of what NIMBYism is going to be like. Not just NIMBYism, but 
Well, actually, yes, NIMBYism, because NIMBYism is the destruction to property owners part. That's a that's a good example of a NIMBYism. And NIMBYism is the not in my backyarders. These are the people that absolutely wouldn't want transit around their areas. They want it to just be car dominated and that it's completely peaceful. So, yeah, that's going to be the big battle battling, not only through NIMBYism, but also uh, the ridicule that we see from politicians where, again, not only do they realize that by going for this, they could get their vote by giving the OK or saying that I approve it or I or I'm going to go for it. The fact that they're saying that they want to uh, get rid of it so that it could go under the graveyard. I don't know. And remember, they just said in this article, if you dare to do that, it's going to disturb the graves. And like I said, you don't want to do something like that. You really don't. So the head of the graveyard, which is called All, All Faith Cemetery, even told AM New York uh, earlier this year that he would prefer the train to run underneath the rest they play. Okay, so that... So I find that interesting because you, you we we could we could clearly see here that there is a tale of two stories, one coming from the head of the cemetery and the other one coming from uh, property owners and as well as politicians. Even though there there is a similarity in both stories, where the politician and the head of the graveyard is saying that it's much better if it runs underneath, but then one of them, being the property owners, are saying that they don't want it to run on the street because it's going to cause this and it's going to cause that knowing that it's going to be basically something that they do in Boston where they run the trains in the middle of the street and that will not uh, cause any sort of disruption to traffic. I don't know what they're thinking when they say disruption to traffic. I guess what they're referring to is like in Austria where they have the trams running on the actual street instead of in the middle of the street. So that's not going to actually be the case. Light rail typically if it runs through the street it runs in the middle of a street in that case. Okay, so that is the update that I wanted to provide you guys in this video. And the update, once again, is that there are advances to the IBX, which is, first of all, really good. First of all, if if they don't get the if they don't give the okay to this project, it's not gonna happen. But the fact that the funding is there as a down payment, which is $2.75 billion. The fact that it's already there, they're going to go for it. And this whole nonsense that, that I that I keep seeing, you know, the whole conflict with the, the nimbyism and the disruption of noise, pollution, traffic. Imagine they'll give you so many excuses. You could, you could say excuses, but also arguments. And so, oh, we don't want it. This and that. Remember, those are people who live in a bubble live in a bubble and they think one way only and that is their way and the highway they don't consider that there are other types of people living in new york city who don't have access to a car who can't even pay for insurance in a car and sadly because of that they have to go for transit and for people like that who are saying no this and this and that well i'm sorry but i i think that's arrogance and that's bad because in a sense that's 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 basically a betrayal to transit here in New York City. So I hope something gets solved out because this is actually a big concern. And this was also something that the viewers did talk about in the comment section about the concerns. What's going to happen with this? Is, is, it, is it still going to run uh, underneath the cemetery or is it going to run in the street? So it'll be very interesting to see what the viewers will say in this video. But other than that, let me, let me know what you guys think. Like, share, comment, and subscribe.